So last week I talked about uh, how hungry we are as a congregation after all this time. As we journey through these five weeks of the bread of life, I'm particularly interested in where we as a church are seeking to be fed in that hunger and how God is feeding us. Our congregation has just come out of a period of fasting from corporate worship, as well as uh, many other things in many other normal habits of our non-pandemic life. We are hungry to get back to normal. Now, now that we are once again able to begin gathering in person, I know that there are those among us who are feeling truly fed for the first time. And to be honest, I'm one of those people. I've missed this assembly. I've missed doing ministry in the physical presence of the people for whom I'm doing it. I've missed being able to connect with you all in the little ways that we haven't been able to for the last 16 months. I miss not seeing the faces of folks who are joining us for the first time because they're on the other side of the screen. I've only recently begun to realize that this time has been harder on me than I, ever, than I ever knew. After such a long period of hunger, this taste makes us hungry for more. We're already beginning to look forward to regaining all those things that we've given up. We're looking forward to seeing the Sunday school full again, to restarting dormant programs, to getting back into the full swing of things the way they were before the pandemic. Maybe we realize that this is going to take some time, but we are very excited to get back. As someone who spent his entire life in a church that's been hungry to go back, I can't help but notice how familiar this all seems. For as long as I can remember, I've heard my denomination, my congregation, my friends and neighbors wondering how we can get back to the way things were, back to those days when the Sunday schools were full and the buildings were humming with activity, back to the days when we just kept growing and growing. I feel today like I could easily be standing among that massive crowd that flooded into the town of Capernaum, all looking for Jesus. Yesterday we ate our fill of the loaves and we had baskets and baskets to spare all from just five barley loaves and two fish. But that was yesterday. What are we to eat today when church attendance is declining and the budget is looking meager and all the children are home because of COVID? Jesus has them pegged, doesn't he? You came because you ate your fill of the loaves, he says to them, not because you saw the signs. They are hungry. We're hungry. They know who, they, who can feed them. But what they don't know, and what I sometimes wonder if even we really don't understand, is just what it means to be fed. In spite of not being able to gather physically, I've seen hungry people come looking for connection during this time. Not only to Anu's Day, but to many congregations. And those folks have been fed. Some of those folks were engaged before, others were not. Even members of this community, folks who seldom participated in worship or programming before COVID, and new people who have never set foot in this building have told me how important this ministry is to them, how wonderful it is to them to be a part of that ministry. During this pandemic, we have found our loaves multiplied miraculously in a time of what should have been a famine. We've eaten our fill and found baskets and baskets of leftovers. But in the story today, Jesus reminds us that as important as those loaves are, they are not the food that Jesus has come to give us. Their hunger prompted the crowds to get in boats and to go sailing around looking for Jesus. But he tells them that the miracle they witnessed in the feeding is simply a sign pointing to the real meal, the true bread come down from heaven. 
The church has always been in the business of feeding people, both physically and metaphorically. We feed people with worship, with education, with programs, with social events, even with literal food, the least of which not being the bread and wine of the sacrament. Those things have filled our bellies and sustained us in our lives. And because those things are so important to us, we want to share them with the people around us. But meanwhile, the world around us has shifted. People can get their fill of these things in lots of other places. We can experience transcendent music at concerts. We can engage in community service through uh, philanthropic clubs. We can get community at sporting events and coffee shops. We can find spirituality in yoga studios and soul cycle classes. Even sacraments can now be distributed online or via vending machine. I have seen those. One by one, all of these things that we thought were at the heart of the church's ministry turned out to be just loaves. And unlike the people in St. John's story, we live in a world where loaves abound. And so, we are left with this question. What more does the church have to offer people? How can we help people be fed? After all these centuries and in spite of all these changes, this story still holds the answer to that question. The true bread from heaven, given for the life of the world, is still Jesus. The pandemic has, in my experience, only made this more clear. In fact, the reason so many people have turned away from the church is not that they're no longer looking for Jesus, but they don't see him here. We've gotten very good at offering people loaves, worship and programs and events and the like, but it seems that we've been less than successful at feeding the real hunger that people have. And I wonder if we've forgotten that all those programs and traditions, as important as they are, are not the reason we're here. Simply working to convince people that our loaves are tastier or healthier or more filling than they can find down the street is not what we are called to do. In the story, it was the crowd's hunger that brought them to Jesus. They had seen the signs he'd done for the sick, and so they gathered on the grass to be fed. They ate their fill of the loaves, and so they went to Capernaum to find him. I wonder what would happen with what would happen if, instead of us telling people what they should be hungry for, the church started listening to what people are actually hungry for. So what hungers do you recognize in the world today? Do you see a hunger for justice? But a hunger for security? Or a hunger for truth? Or hunger for connection. And the next question, what do you hunger for? Maybe it's some of those same things, but maybe it's something different. How has your experience with Jesus, the bread of life, filled that hunger? Or has it? In the end, that's really the only question that matters because it's the only one that any of us can answer with any authority. D.T. Niles famously said that evangelism is simply one beggar telling another where to find bread. All that we are called to do as Christians is to follow that hunger where it leads us and to walk with one another along the way as we search for fulfillment. The church began as a way of bringing people together as they took that journey. As a matter of fact, the early church called themselves simply the way. All the loaves that we share together along the way are simply to remind us of how hungry we are for the food which endures to eternal life. Food which only God can give us. Not any congregation or class or studio or concert. 
Those loaves help keep us hungry for the only thing that can ultimately satisfy so that we keep looking, keep walking, keep rowing, keep sailing. What would the church look like if we took that hunger seriously? Where might that hunger lead us? Sometimes it feels to me like the church is so set on offering people answers and solutions that we forget to honor the questions. We become so fixated on trying to feed one another that we don't stop to listen to the hunger. It's kind of like when you're watching TV and you start snacking because you think you're hungry but you're not actually hungry, you're just bored. Sometimes that can be dangerous because if we don't pay attention to the hunger and consider where it's leading us, what we are hungry for, we're liable to fill that hunger up with other things. Things like power or success or possessions or any one of a million other things that may fill us for today but leave us empty tomorrow. Jesus today invites that crowd still looking for bread, to listen to their hunger, to sit with it, to trust it, rather than just trying to slake it. He invites them to wake up to their hunger, to pay attention to it as a sign of the work that God is doing in them. What must we do to perform the works of God, they ask? And Jesus says, Stay hungry. Pay attention to the work that God is already doing in you. Trust me, he says. So what if, instead of trying to sell this congregation as a place with the greatest programs, or doing our best to educate and answer all the questions that people have, we committed ourselves to honoring and to listening to the hunger of the people that we encountered? What if we committed ourselves to walking alongside them as they seek nourishment? What might that look like for this congregation? What might that require of each of us?